Thank you for joining. Um, I'm Mauricio Valente Giacomello, lead QA at TED Surgery. And it's going to be a um, hard presentation after this second one. It was really good. Um, so the topic for today, um, thanks, uh, by the way, thanks Zoe for inviting me. Um, and I had to think about a little bit what and how I could add something to this uh, topic. It's uh, like multidis multidisciplinary teams. Most of my teams in my career so far uh, were multidisciplinary. So what could I get out of it and what, how, how this uh, helped to build who I am right now as a professional? So I thought about talking about how I am a really annoying person reviewing code. <laughs> so the agenda for today, so some introduction, reviewing PRs of another QAs, reviewing PRs from a business analyst or a PO. Uh, yeah, that happens. And reviewing PRs from other devs and question and answers. All right, uh, just as I start here, raise your hand who's an automation engineer or work with test automation. All right, and out of these people, who has more than one QA engineer in the team? Okay, and who out of these people know how to solve a merge conflict? <laughs> cool. Um, so I, I, I know my, my public here. Okay, so pull request. Um, based on GitHub, pull request would be reviews, uh, allow collaborators to comment on changes proposed in the pull request, approve the changes, or request further changes before the pull request is merged. Uh, repository administrator can require that all the pull requests are approved before merging. From GitLab, uh, who was bought by Apple a few days ago. Um, a merge request, not a pull request, um, is the basis of GitLab as the code collaboration and version control platform. Uh, it's simple as the name implies, a request to merge one branch into another. So you are working in one branch, you want to merge all your code into, the, into another one, or main, or whatever you have. Um, Cool. It kind of looks like this. Um, we have some stuff. We'll go through a few things and how we can uh, get most of it. But you have a title, you have a description, you have your changes, you might have people who are reviewing and where all this go. Down here you have the actual changes and what, what is happening. Um, it's probably going to be a really quick um, presentation, by the way. So let's, let's, let's see. Um, so you have a pull request for another dev. I think the agenda is, <coughs> is, is, is incorrect, but let's start with devs. So you're reviewing the pull request of another dev and what you should look for. Sometimes you don't even look. You are on Slack, talking to your team, sitting next to each other, and then someone posts a link to uh, Bitbucket or whatever software you guys use for version control. And then you don't even click because it's a code from a developer and you probably don't even know what they are doing there. Uh, I, I encourage you to click and see what kind of code are they creating and what, how your so the software you are testing is built line by line. Uh, you might learn something as an automation engineer. If you, let's say, if you're coding all your framework in Java, and all your team codes your backend or your whatever you do also in Java, you might learn some, some cool stuff that you could apply to your own code. So it's pretty interesting. You might not understand everything. It's, it, that's fine. They, they are specialists in what they do. You might not understand all those things that they are doing, but you might get something out of it. So in, in, this, in this case, I took screenshots of one uh, pull request that I created to myself and things that you could be looking for. So let's say in this screen, which is probably looks like, looks like 
most of the uh, version controls like you be you will see something like this on github or gitlab or bitbucket will be all similar so first one is the title of your pull request it might it needs to mean something because after a while you will see all these pull requests linked to a certain ticket and you don't even know what they are or let's say the description if you have a really long pull request with multiple lines multiple files being modified you need to understand the summary of it how how you are going to review this code how you're going to look through, through it so you need to have a good description and a good title to open the mind of the people that are reviewing and who raises the pull request is the developer but it's up to you to make sure uh, things are, are good and readable uh, because you're the QA, you're the guy who are trying to raise the quality of your product. Uh, sometimes they don't do what it should. They might know that you need to have a good description, but they just leave it without any description or just post one link to a certain ticket. But it's good to have because you can go back in time and see what kind of changes uh, it has. Um, reviewers, like here we don't have any reviewers because I created the pull request to myself, but let's say you have a, a pull request of a backend change, you're not going to add, you, you might add people from the front end team to review the code, but it's nice to have at least uh, the whole team of the backend team to review or someone from, from the front end to understand what APIs are going to change or things that are going to change. So it's good to know the audience of each pull request. And most of the um, softwares, they allow you to, to add other people. So you see that there is someone missing in the reviewers, you can simply add someone else uh, to review it. Mm -hmm. Tickets. Uh, so most of the time when you work on code, it's always related to a certain ticket or issue or whatever you want to call in your team. So it's nice to have a, like, a way that you can link your pull request to a certain ticket. So making sure that there is a link somewhere in the description or in the title that you can simply click and go to what is the, the what should be changed, what is this pull request is all about. Mm, next one. Uh, destination of the uh, pull request. So in this case, I'm creating pull request from Mauricio Key Roundabout to master. So sometimes the destination of your pull request might not be master. Maybe master triggers a deploy into production and you don't want the deploy to happen right now. So you could make sure that all your pull requests, they go to the dev branch or any, any branch that might be uh, interested in to that. Sometimes these tools, they always merge a certain uh, branch and this pull request might not need to be to, not, might not need to go to master. Um, commit messages. So here you are seeing all the commit messages that are created and they are awful. And that's another thing that is really important, is to have atomic commits. So you can go back in time uh, and always be able to cherry pick or to remove a certain change that you've done. So you can simply click on commits and see what the commits are all about, if they are meaningful, if they are atomic, and that kind of thing. Um, that's, that's you reviewing someone else's changes. So you can simply add a comment and say, hey guys, hi guys, this this commits they are not meaningful. Could we rebase or do anything that make make it more good? <laughs> Basically. Um, what else? Okay, so you see all the file that all the files that were changed. This one I just created one dummy project uh, with a few things and by looking at this I can see that the code that was added is the core let's say I can tell that core is the actual code that is being implemented and by that 
I can just look through the to the files <coughs> that are being changed, and I can start looking and ask myself, where are the tests of this core? So if you don't see any changes in core underlying tests or core tests or test score, something like that, it might trigger something back of your head and say, hey, maybe this guy only wrote code and forgot all the unit tests. That happens. So here you have like the this here, which you have your um, your tests for for the actual code that is being changed. So that one one thing that you could have a look at. Um, so sometimes you you are reading through the code and you see comments and docs of every th single thing. And sometimes the docs are too long and no one will read it. So you can simply add a comment and saying, hey, is it possible to reduce a little bit this, this chunk of code? Um, so that's one, one way. Uh, or you might not have one, like you have this magic that you don't know what is happening in that method and there is absolutely no comment. So what, what, what is this actually doing? So if there is a code that you don't understand anything and it has like magical numbers and things like that, it, it probably is missing some, some comments and uh, if someone reads this, won't understand anything. Mm -hmm. So empty files, sometimes someone creates a file and forgets to delete and at the end of the day, they commit the file that is empty. So you can look at the file and say, hey, is this, this should be empty or we, you, you forgot? Or is there is a new code that will use this later on or something like that? Um, you, as soon as you see a test class, it's normally it's really easy. You have your preconditions, your action, and your expected uh, behavior. And you can read through. Normally the methods, they, they are, the names of the methods, they're really meaningful, like this one, uh, test upper. So you, can, you know that you are testing the upper case. And if you read through and you're implementing something related to strings, you might ask yourself if you have uppercase, why you don't have a lowercase? So you, you might see that things are missing. There are testing missing. Um, so you can comment and ask, hey, where, did, uh, where, where is this test? It, it was implemented before and we are introducing this as a new part of the code. <coughs> um, formatting, so it's kind of easy to spot this one, but Sometimes you have, for Python, you have some standards that you can you follow. So you have like PEP8 and other uh, linting uh, things that you can do. So this one looks horrible. So you can add a comment and say, hey, is this uh, correctly formatted? Or did we miss uh, linting before committing all the code? That's one, one problem. Um, sometimes we, the developers, they change the version of a certain library and it might be automatic by the IDE, like there's a new version of the IDE and it, it, there is a, like a, 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 a box where you say, do you want to get the latest and they click and forget about it and they commit this change. So it's nice to ask if this new library of this update of the library was actually expected it might break, like if you have an external library, it might break the whole app if you update to a new, or a new major version. Uh, one extra would be, you are a developer as well, you're developing tests, and you might know something that a junior developer doesn't know or an intermediate developer doesn't know. So if you're reading the code, you might know something that this person doesn't know. In this case, uh, it's a, both both scripts they work, but one is um, much better. So it's it's nice to read the code and see and maybe help someone else to learn uh, some new code uh, because that's how you learn. You 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 write the code and you learn a new uh, new skills and then you can help others. 
So this is when you review code for a developer. That's the kind of thing that you can spot without even knowing how to code. Uh, when you're reviewing a code of another QA, uh, there are a few things that uh, might, might affect. For instance, if the, QA, the other QA is a new person and is learning how to code or is learning about a test automation, uh, there are a lot of things that you can help. For instance, you can help with coding standards, uh, with uh, reuse of utility class. Sometimes we have one utility class that does some uh, magic that this person doesn't know about it. Like, let's say, create new data with one method, and this person is trying to create manually every single test. So you can say, hey, there is this utility class already, so just use it. Framework patterns, let's say you use uh, page objects in your framework, and this person is trying to apply another pattern in your framework, so you, you need to make sure that Every, every single one in your team is following the same uh, structure. As well as the correct people they are reviewing. Let's say you, you are adding feature files. It's nice to have the, the BA or the PO to review if your tests are correct, if your expected behaviors are correct. Um, the correct logic of the test. Sometimes the test passes, but it's just because the logic is completely wrong. Um, and a few possible edge cases. Here's like one screen, screenshot. Like um, I'm just testing zero, one, and we could test negative values or something like that. Reviewing uh, for POs, uh, PO or BAs. Sometimes they are techy stuff, te uh, technology, technology advanced enough to. Uh, do some pull requests and maybe um, commit some translations or mappings or feature files. You can help them uh, into reviewing that kind of thing. So it's always nice to point to a reference because this person normally doesn't know everything that is doing. So it, this person is probably trying to help the team by like uh, using version control. So it's nice to point to a reference, point what you're saying to a certain reference so this person can verify.